All right, here's some numbers. Here's some numbers. And I want to add them to a tree. Here's a binary search tree that has those numbers. OK. Everybody's happy. That's a pretty good tree. If I want to search for the 14 or the 12, or if I want to know if there's a 15 in there, it's a log n algorithm, right? Because I divide my data in half. I don't compare half of the data. I just look at half. I go down, I go down, I go down. I keep going in halves. But I could also build a tree from these numbers like this. That's also a valid binary search tree. These nodes are null in this tree, just as these nodes are null in this tree. Right? So we've got some nulls too. The difference is, well, what's the complexity of searching for this? This one, if we search through it, has complexity a big O of log n to find things. What's the complexity of searching through this? It's big O of n. That's right. It's a crappy linked list, right? So we want our trees to be beautiful binary search trees and not to be crappy linked lists, because we've already written crappy linked lists. And the difference between those two things is called balance. OK? So this tree is balanced, and this tree is not balanced. By balance, it means what it says, right? It's approximately equal. And so one of the things that we want to do as we're adding numbers to the tree, perhaps, or as we're thinking about uh, building our trees, is we want to ensure that our trees remain as balanced as possible. Now, if you notice, when I added the numbers to the top tree, what I did is I started in the middle at the 10. And then I went a half, and then I went a half, and then I went to the other half, and then I went on the right-hand side and did it the same way. And on the second tree, when I added the numbers, I started on the left, and I just went across the numbers, left to right. So clearly, one of the ways that I can promote balance or ensure balance is by choosing my numbers. So if I've got a sorted list, I start in the middle and then go by halves, and that makes a balanced tree. Similarly, if I randomize the order of my numbers, I'm much less likely to see a structure like this, right? You only would really see this if the numbers are actually in order as you try and add them. So there's a couple of ways that I can manipulate my data to try and add them to a tree and maintain balance. But there's also ways that we can manipulate the tree so that as we add things, we keep things in balance. And so let's look at a real simple example. So here is a part of that tree. Let's say we've got a 10. We add a 10, and everything's fine. Our tree's balanced. And then we add a 6. Everything's fine. Our tree's balanced. And then we add a 4. And our tree starts getting out of balance, right? It's starting to go more long and straggly than nice and short and bushy tree-like. As you'll see over the next few classes, there's some ways that we actually measure balance. But for now, all I'm going to say is that this is not balanced, and this is balanced. But as we get there, we'll talk about how we actually measure balance eventually. So what I really want to do as I'm adding these numbers is I've added the 4. So I added the 10, the 6, and then I added the 4. Okay. So this is the child node. This is the parent node. And this is the grandparent. And just like in life, the grandparents have to pay for the sins of their grandchildren. So what we're going to do is we're going to rebalance, we're going to rearrange our tree. 
and we're going to make the grandparent do all the work. Yes. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this grandparent and we're going to rotate the grandparent around like this. So the grandparent ends up over here. Okay? It's called, in this case, it's called a left rotate, sorry, a right rotation. It's called a right rotation because we're on the right hand side of the numbers, yeah? And so we're going to end up with the 6, the 4, and the 10. The grandparent becomes the sibling and the parent becomes the new parent to both nodes. Similarly, if we have, um, let's say we have 4, 6, and then we add 10, again, the 10, when we add it, is the node that causes all the problems. Oh, I hate you, 10. You've been nothing but trouble. Child, parent, grandparent. What we're going to do is take the grandparent and we're going to rotate it around so that the grandparent becomes the new child. And so this is called a left okay, rotation. And that then we end up with 6, 4, 10. If the imbalance is in the left child's left subtree, Then we do a right rotation. If the imbalance is in the right child's right subtree, then we do a left rotation. Okay. And then the other thing I want you to think about and notice what's going on here, which is really critical, is that in each case, so here we have the smallest element, here we have the largest element, and here we have the median element. Yeah? And what we're doing in our rotation is we're rearranging the tree so that our median element ends up on the top. The same, here we have the largest element, here we have the smallest element, and here we have the median element. And we're rearranging the tree so the median element ends up on the top. Cool? So when we're rearranging these trees, we always do it so that the median element becomes the, the top, the root element.